Okay, after getting everything kind of cleaned up, right here you can see just how badly that's scraped up. And as I mentioned, I was getting a, a noise on the transmission. This is why. Okay, the first order of business, you want to make sure that you take a very close look at all of the gears, look for anything that's chipped, uh, look for cracks, look for excessive wear. Because any piece that's damaged now, you really don't want to put back in the car. You're just going to ruin a freshly rebuilt gearbox, and you're not going to have fixed whatever problem was there in the first place. teeth on these look okay. It helps to do this in a room with a lot of light. You can see the way that the light reflects on the teeth and uh, as you spin it past you should be able to see everything looks just very even and the same on both sides. Well, not necessarily the same, but that everything looks good. And the other thing you want to look for is just wear on the splines. I've already pointed it out, but you can see right here the wear that's on this shaft. So that's a clear area there, and then you get the... I, I can feel this with my fingernail. It's like somebody took sandpaper to it. So this main shaft is junk as well. You'll want to do the same for the input shaft and the lay shaft and lay gears as well. Here's where you're going to want to consult your shop manual to see which gearbox you have because there are some subtle differences between them and things such as setting the end float on gears or how the lay gear fits on top of the lay shaft. There's going to be some differences and you're going to want to know what those are as you go through your rebuild. So use this video as a guide but make sure that you've got a shop manual, uh, preferably a factory shop manual one. That's going to be the, the best one to go with but make sure you have something to reference as you go through it. For example, on your lay gear, uh, the early boxes, if you've got a single, uh, if you have a three synchro box instead of a four synchro one, like I think around 1970 in a Spitfire they were introduced, you had bushes in the end of this that were subject to wear. You drift it out and put in a new one. When you got to 1970, they started using these needle roller bearings. Now, they're a pain in the rear end to replace all of them, uh, but that's one of the differences. So you're going to want to make sure you're getting the right parts. Otherwise, when you go to put everything back together, you're going to be ordering things multiple times. So check with the numbers on the gearbox that you have and make sure you're ordering the correct parts. The number, by the way, can be seen right here on the side. So it's a little bit hard to read, but this is an FH box. So this is going to be, technically it's wrong for my car, but it's, it's a 71, uh, is supposedly 70, 71. Uh, if you see an FH, that's what that would be from. So uh, this is a four synchro box, and so I want to make sure that when I'm ordering parts, I'm ordering it for the correct gearbox. Now take your main shaft with the gears on it, and you want to find something to lock it in place. I use this workbench, but a vice will work as long as you don't crank down on it. Uh, I recommend putting a rag or something in the middle, too. Um, and the next order of business is to get this circlip out. This circlip is by far the biggest pain in the rear end. There is technically a special tool for it, but since nobody has a special tool, you kind of have to make do with what you can find. And you're sort of putting the screwdriver down in the grooves, a narrow screwdriver, mind you, and trying to work it out.
You are absolutely going to swear a lot during this process, so I'm not going to show the whole thing, just in case there's kids watching, but have some patience, and you kind of just have to dig it out. Now with a bit of luck and a small enough screwdriver, you can get the end of the circlip so that just one end is actually outside, and then you kind of just lever it around. One step at a time. So you finally get it to release. There. That is by far the hardest part of this whole process. And then just as you loosen it off, make sure that it doesn't go flying. There we go. Sir clip removed other pieces can start to come out. And we can keep going. Quick note as you're taking everything apart, these hubs have a piece that kind of slides out, but when you when you slide it out, there's three ball bearings and springs that are on the inside. That's what holds tension. So put a rag around it when you do that so that you can catch all of the pieces because they can go flying. Next, we want to measure the end float of the gears on their bushes. You're going to be doing this with second and third gear. You're going to need each gear the bush that it was on and you're also there's a washer uh, that when you took the circlip off this is the first piece that came out uh, you're gonna want that too there's probably other ways to do it but uh, anyway that, that's a very useful piece to help you'll also want a socket that happens to just fit inside there a straight edge and you're gonna need a feeler gauge and then of course you will want a rag because before you do this you need to make sure that the surfaces are clean of any dirt Take your socket, washer down on top, last second wipe, put your gear on top of that. Now you've got a flat surface. Make sure there's nothing on the edge of the bushing. Get that inside too. So now you have a flat surface. And if you use a straight edge, like this, you should be able to put a feeler gauge in and see how much space you're working with. So this is four thousandths. It should be bigger than this, which it is. Let's try five. And six, which is our spec. Seems like it's just shy of six on this. Repeat this with third gear, and then we need to start reassembling. Next, you'll need to check the main shaft end float. So you want your main shaft, and to the end of that, you will add the washer. You don't need the gears for this, but you will need the bushes from the gears. The bush, the washer. Next bush, and then this washer here. I can get it on in the right direction. There we go. 
Uh, technically, you're going to want to refit the circ clip for this. What you're looking for is, with everything in place, how much end play movement do you have? So up and down movement this way. Um, there's a number of ways to do it, but probably the easiest is just slide it all the way to one side and see what size feeler gauge you can fit in here. Uh, spec on this transmission is four to ten thousandths, uh, so anywhere in between there. If I can fit a four but I can't fit a three, I'm still good. If I can fit an eleven, that's a problem. Uh, but that's that's how you would check the end float there. I'm not going to do this right now because the circ clip is a pain in the rear end to take back off, and I'm changing main shafts anyway. So if you're going to change the main shaft, you should probably check the end float on the new one and that's what I will be doing when I start ordering some parts, but now I know what I need. Incidentally, if you really don't want to go through the trouble, these circ clips are probably not that expensive. I'd imagine it's a couple of bucks to get, and the thought that I had is why not just cut this in half, measure it with a caliper. You want to see to the thousandth, or even uh, more precise if you can, but how thick is this exactly? You can put the pieces then in, and when you get your new circ clip, just measure it and make sure that the new circ clip is the same width. Uh, one of the issues you're going to have is that the new circ clip may be a little bit different, and if it is, you could have ordered the wrong parts, but uh, it should be pretty close, and if you don't mind ordering parts twice, that's a good idea where you don't have to uh, bother figuring out how to get this stupid thing off again. So up to you how you want to do it, but I'll probably just use the same one because I'm a glutton for punishment. Next is for the hub units, and the way that these go together, you see little ball bearings with springs, and the reason that they have springs in there is so you could slide it back and forth, see, and it kind of clicks into space. That's what those are doing. So. Again, careful not to lose any of the pieces when you dismantle it. If you're having trouble getting the ball bearings out, a magnet can help you, and then you might want a sharp end in case they're really giving trouble, but generally all you should have to do, there we go, ball bearing and spring. So do this for all six of these because there's two hubs and you want to get all these ball bearings and springs out. Okay, almost done. What we need to do is get this bearing off of the input shaft here. There's a circlip, because why wouldn't you put a circlip anywhere else? Well, fortunately, this one's easy to get out. And then once out, you're going to need to give it some taps with a hammer. If you have a press, obviously that's preferred. If not, just go back. You could also use a soft-faced hammer. Again, this one's made of lead. There we go. As you can see, the surface of this is fine because the hammer got all dented up, not the steel. But if you happen to have access to a press, it's probably the best way to do it. Okay, we're looking at the input shaft now, and one thing on all of the pieces as you inspect them, take a look at these teeth, because as you're shifting gears, you'll notice that there's kind of like an angled uh, line in there where it sort of slopes on both sides. That's because when you shift gears, the hub is going to slide onto one of these pieces. It's going to use the synchro ring to sort of slow everything down, and it's going to slide onto one of these pieces, whether it's backward or forward, and that's how you shift gears. So you need that kind of sharp crisp angle you need those clean lines if these are chewed up you're gonna have difficulty shifting gears it may make noise you may have trouble getting into gear so you definitely want to check that and the other thing that you want to take a look at is your synchro rings and you should be able to see some lines in there but more importantly is going to be the feel to it uh, so this is the input shaft here but you, you'll have your synchro ring and then as you press uh, it creates friction. That's what stops one piece from spinning and uh, matches speed to the rest of the of the gear train. So uh, this synchro ring does not feel particularly tight. But if I take this and instead instead use the one from fourth gear, it's a much more positive feel. And so one one way to tell if you really don't can't have a feel for it. Well, first of all, run your fingers on it, and you'll you'll probably feel a difference just from there but if you can't tell go through the rings first gear through fourth 
on the same gear and just see how they feel differently. And if you're getting a much different feel, then it's likely that uh, the lower gears are worn out. Usually second and third, especially second, that's going to be your, your worst one. And that's when you're shifting, you're going from first into second, you know, you're, you're kind of racing through the gears. So going into fourth gear, you're usually just cruising, so this one doesn't see as much wear. And you could find new synchros, but the, the quality isn't always the best. I have heard that it's gotten better, so uh, just if you're going to buy a set, go for it, but just I would check it and make sure uh, actually on the gear, compare it to some synchros that you that you know are at least halfway decent or that weren't making noise because uh, that's really going to be what you want. Usually I will try and put the, the best ones on, especially second, maybe the second best on third gear. Um, so compare your synchros if you can't find a decent set, that's, that's the order. Second's probably the most important followed by third because that's the order that they're going to wear out. And that's it for now. So I'm going to start ordering some parts. I haven't torn into the overdrive yet, and then I will do another video showing the reassembly. Uh, the top cover is one thing that I didn't cover taking this apart, and I have covered that in another video. So check out the video, subscribe to the channel, and you will see that as well. If you have any questions, go ahead and post it in the comments below. Uh, I will get back to you as soon as I see it. I don't know all of this stuff, guys. Honestly, I'm just following the manual and doing what smarter people than I have told me to do. So, But none of it's rocket science. You really don't need that much in the line of special tools. Uh, this is something you can honestly do yourself with just some extra time. So uh, keep watching the videos. If you've got other things that you want to see, uh, let me know. Uh, but as I continue to go through projects on my own cars, I will film it and I will put it on the channel for you. So. Thanks a lot, and like I said, subscribe, and please post in the comments below. Thank you.